All righty. Good morning. I am Donovan Richards, Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. And this morning we are joined by Council Members Gentili, Garodnik, Williams, Torres, Reynoso, and Gradinchik. Today we will be voting to approve the self storage zoning text amendment land use item number 817 with modifications. The self storage text amendment is a zoning action to establish new restrictions on self storage development within designated areas in M districts, which largely coincide with industrial business zones, IBZs, better known as. These areas include parts of 24 city council districts throughout all of the boroughs except Manhattan. The Department of City Planning is the applicant for this citywide zoning text amendment. The administration and the council together announced the intent to advance restrictions on the development of self storage facilities and in industrial business zones in November 2015 as part of the 10 point industrial action plan to modernize the city's industrial policy. The industrial sector in New York City provides over 500,000 jobs for a majority minority in immigrant workforce and on average pays middle class wages to many workers who may not be able to find comparable opportunities in other sectors. The sector has the highest economic multiplier of any sector and provides essential support for the supply chains and infrastructure of New York City. In contrast, self storage facilities are a low job generating use with only five employees on average per facility and are primarily used by residential households for storage of household goods. Self storage can currently locate in any M or C8 zone throughout the city. Over 70% of self storage is currently located outside of IBZs, and this action with the modification still provides ample siting opportunities for self storage facilities across New York City. But as self storage facilities continue to be built, this action will ensure that this growth does not undermine the economic development objectives of the city to support the industrial sector and preserve siting opportunities in industrial business zones for job intensive industrial businesses. Other cities such as Chicago have placed similar zoning restrictions on self storage facilities in their most attractive in their most active industrial zones for this very same rationale. The original application filed by the Department of City Planning would create a new CPC special permit requirement for all new self storage development within the designated areas. On November 1st, the City Planning Commission approved an alternative ATEX version that would allow self storage as of right but add new mixed use requirements for providing space for industrial businesses. The Zoning and Franchises Subcommittee held a public hearing on this application on November 20th where both the original special permit and the ATEX mixed use version were discussed. After hearing from representatives from the self storage industry, advocates for industrial business development and numerous other stakeholders, the council has decided upon a hybrid proposal that establishes the special permit in most IBZs, but allows an as of right storage option in certain areas in order to allow additional opportunities for as of right development of self storage across the city. The as of right option will apply to the Bathgate IBZ in the Bronx, the Steinway IBZ, and map one of the Jamaica IBZ in Queens, and lastly, the West Shore and Rossville IBZs in Staten Island. In determining these areas, the council considered numerous factors. Brooklyn already has the most self storage facilities of any borough and has experienced a particularly acute shortage of industrial siting opportunities. Therefore, the special permit was considered appropriate throughout the borough. In the Bronx and Queens, Bathgate, Steinway, and Map 1 of the Jamaica IBZ all only have one existing self storage facility each compared to IBZs such as Eastchester, Zarega, and the other sections of the Jamaica IBZ that are already heavily saturated. These areas were therefore deemed appropriate for an as of right development option. In Staten Island, the West Shore and Rossville areas, 
have very large swaths of vacant land and the competition for industrial siting opportunities is far less acute in other IBZs than in other IBZs in the city. The Council has substantially revised the mixed use requirements for these areas in order to more easily facilitate as of right self storage development by increasing the lot size threshold to 50,000 square feet down from 25,000 square feet. The special permit will apply in the Port Morris, Hunts Point, Zarega, and East Chester IBZs in the Bronx, all IBZs in Brooklyn, Long Island City, Ridgewood, Maspeth, Woodside, JFK, and Jamaica Maps 2 through 4 in Queens, and the North Shore IBZ in Staten Island. The special permit is not a ban on self storage in these areas. Let me say that again. Special permit requirement is not a ban on self storage in these areas. We have revised the special permit to increase the clarity of the findings, and we are confident that developers will be able to make successful application for sites that are appropriate for self storage development. I do believe this hybrid proposal is responsive to the concerns we have heard from some of our colleagues, the public, and achieves the original purpose of the action to help preserve siting opportunities in industrial business zones for job intensive industrial business businesses, while also allowing the self storage in industry opportunities for future development. So with that, I recommend my colleagues vote yes on this application as, it, as it's been modified. And I will now turn it over to any of my colleagues uh, who wish to speak on uh, this item. And I'll start with Councilmember Richie Torres. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you, even though the text amendment has been packaged as a compromise, I cannot in good conscience vote for a proposal that scapegoats self-storage rather than addresses the root causes of industrial displacement. We are adopting as a city a patchwork policy of stifling self-storage development, not because the facts have shown that doing so would revive manufacturing. No such findings exist. And after all, who needs facts that threaten to stand in the way of a good story about the city council leaping to the rescue of manufacturing by reining in the big bad boogeyman of self-storage? We are voting to cripple self-storage for one reason and one reason alone, because we can pure and simple. The text amendment before us must be seen for what it truly is, an exercise of raw legislative power, utterly disconnected from any real attempt at fact-finding. The fact that the council would think it appropriate to legislate a citywide policy without so much as conducting a single study is a sign of post-factual policymaking at work. And for those of you watching, either from here or from home, do not let yourself be fooled by all the heartwarming rhetoric about a manufacturing renaissance. The arbitrary incrementalism of a self-storage special permit is no substitute for a comprehensive strategy on manufacturing. If the council had a larger preservation strategy for manufacturing, grounded in fact rather than feeling, it would have carefully explored the market impact of all non-industrial uses on IBZs rather than arbitrarily single out one industry that makes for a convenient pinata. But politics being what it is, finding a scapegoat offers more instant gratification than finding a solution. Thank you, Richie. Anybody else have any statements or comments or concerns? I'm gonna go, go to Councilmember Garadnik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to um, note before the vote that uh, there are uh, clearly articulated concerns about self-storage in industrial business zones. <clears throat> they are a low job uh, industry. Uh, there's an argument that the existence of self-storage could inhibit uh, some of the manufacturing opportunities in industrial business zones. Uh, and fundamentally, I think we all do agree that we want to have policies that protect industrial business zones for primarily manufacturing uses. Um, this plan is odd. I think we, we should recognize that uh, what Councilmember Torres said is 
um, is right, uh, that we are affecting self-storage here, but we're not uh, addressing some of the other low job industries that also exist in manufacturing zones, in IBZs, uh, like warehouses. We discussed this at the hearing. The distinction between self-storage and warehouse to me is one that is not really all that clear. Um, and uh, there is no evidence that what we're doing here today actually would promote manufacturing in IBZs. Um, we've still got a lot of opportunities for other uses in IBZs. Hotels, the warehouses I noted, strip clubs, tow pounds. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of opportunities uh, that are not manufacturing uses. Um, but I, I don't have any IBZs in my district. I represent the east side of Manhattan. Uh, and most of uh, the members uh, who do have the IBZs appear to be supporting uh, this compromise measure. So I'm going to vote for it today. And I am just going to hope, as I'm term limited in a few weeks, that this council moves forward to a more complete study of this issue uh, and a uh, more complete uh, plan for how to deal with um, manufacturing in IBZs and addressing the fact that we have a number of other uh, industries which are left untouched in this proposal, singling out only one. So my, my hope here is that this is the beginning of a broader conversation and not the end. Uh, and, uh, and so with that, I thank you for the opportunity to say a few words. Thank you. And let me just, uh, I don't want to go tit for tat, but certainly we do not see this as the end of the conversation. This is the beginning of a conversation on certainly preserving uh, manufacturing. And listen, I mean, there's no getting around it. We're seeing cell storage pop up in a lot of different places. There is a lot of speculation and not, and not to particularly put all the blame on cell storage. I mean, hotels is on the agenda as well. Um, and we still have a lot more work to ensure that investment and other things are happening in IBCs to promote more manufacturing. So I don't think anyone in passing this today, in particular me, as the chair sees this as the end of the conversation. This is the beginning uh, of a message that we're sending that we have a lot of work uh, to protect IBZs uh, across the city. And at the same time, let's be clear, um, you know, there, there are opportunities for those council members who feel strongly um, that they want self-storage in their districts to have that opportunity. So this is not stymieing it. I think having a EULA process for people to speak to council members before they come into their districts to strengthen opportunities for their particular districts is an important uh, piece here. And the council does have an obligation and does have the power, and we should use that power uh, to ensure that we're doing everything to preserve uh, good jobs and to create good jobs across the city. And, and, it, and no matter what the, fa I mean, we can look at the facts. The facts are that self-storage provides on average four jobs and none of these jobs are paying great wages as well. And I don't think they're adding necessarily to the economy of communities that other uses could, uh, in particular manufacturing. So I'll go to Councilmember uh, Reynoso. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to state some, my perspective on this. I have one of the largest IBZs in the city of New York in North Brooklyn um, and MassBeth. Uh, and in, in both cases, uh, over the last 10 years, we've seen an increase in job growth and in the leasing or purchasing of the manufacturing land for actual jobs. Um, uh, I'm extremely happy to see that happen as uh, uh, thousands of jobs uh, provided um, by the IBZ in my district to uh, folks of uh, uh, lower education level, high skilled. Uh, we have um, locations in my district, like Martin Clothiers, uh, Wontong Foods, um, and, and other uh, what I would call iconic manufacturers, Boar's Head Distribution Services are all uh, important manufacturers in our, in our city. Uh, but what I'm also seeing is not only hotels, but also self-storage. 
uh, playing a role in the displacement of these jobs. Now, some would say we would need to call for a study. Uh, I, would, I would dare to say that uh, do we need a study to prove that gentrification exists in low-income neighborhoods? Uh, no, it's, a, it's not anecdotal. It is, it is widespread, it is happening, and we can see that happening. Uh, those that have IBZs um, have the experience to see what threatens them. Uh, and we are working hard to have a comprehensive plan to address all the non-manufacturing uses in the IBZs. Um, at this point, what is up for discussion is self-storage. This is not only about self-storage, this is about the preservation of manufacturing districts. And if you have one in your district, it'd be hard to say that it isn't working or that it, we don't need to support it or that we need to do everything we can to, to bring resources to manufacturing. So um, again, every single non-job intensive use is a threat to the rest of the manufacturing districts. We know that self-storage and hotels are getting more per square footage dollars in rent and leases than traditional manufacturing uses. Um, average manufacturing price for per square foot in my district ranges from 18 to $22 a square foot. And we know self-storage tends to pay up to or more than $40 a square foot. That's twice the price that is being asked for for traditional manufacturing uses. Um, in doing so, we have manufacturers that can warehouse and do warehouse their sites looking for CubeSmart and other storage, uh, self-storage uh, owners to come in and buy their properties um, and jack up the rents or the opportunities or speculate across the rest of the IBZ. So again, uh, while I do think a study is always a great thing to have, um, if you have a district that has a large IBZ and you don't see the displacement happening, um, then uh, you know, I, I would love to, to hear that from a member that has an IBZ. Uh, and again, I do think that the members that have an IBZ all support this unanimously. Uh, and given the strength of member deference in this institution, um, again, I'll be hard pressed to find a member that can vote against a member that has one. So again, I will be voting aye on, on this item, and I think it's been a good compromise, and I'm looking forward to tackling other issues within the manufacturing districts that are not manufacturing uses. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from my colleagues? Okay, seeing none, I will now ask the council to call the roll. Uh, I, I will now call on a vote to approve land use item number 817 with the modifications I just described. Council, please call the roll. Chair Richards. I vote aye. Gentile. I vote aye. Gorodnik. Aye. Williams. Aye. Reynoso. I probably vote aye. Torres. Uh, nay. Gredenchik. Permission to explain my vote, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. You may explain. I just, uh, I just want to take a moment uh, to associate myself with some of the remarks made by my colleagues, Richie Torres and Dan Gorodnik. Um, I think that um, while it has been modified, um, we have to remember this is a very diverse city uh, economically, socially, in, in so many different ways. And uh, we as a council need to remember that uh, one size never fits all. With that, I will vote aye on, all, uh, aye on this proposal, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, by a vote of six in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions, LU 817 is approved with modifications and referred to the full land use oh, committee. Hold on. Oh, wait. Councilmember Williams had a delay. Oh. Okay. Councilmember Williams. May I excuse me my vote? Yes, you may. Thank you very much. Um, I'm voting aye on, on this bill. I just wanted to listen to my colleagues in trying to uh, make sense of uh, what I think some of the issues they were trying to raise which I think some of them uh, are good ones. There are some, some facts remaining, but there are some facts that are out there. And I think it's clear that in some of these areas, the self-storage are maximizing space that was meant for something else. I think this is part of a, a broader plan to try to deal with that, not just um, with the storage units, but also going after some of the others. But in that, we just have to remember that this particular industry in an outsized manner was moving faster than any other industry. So I think if the strip club industry or the other industries were moving as fast, 
we should stop them as well. But they weren't. It was these. And they're taking a large amount of space with not a lot of uh, good return in jobs, and we have to take that into consideration. I agree we do have to have a, a comprehensive approach. I think this is a part of it, so I don't mind supporting it. And uh, to one of my colleagues, I think uh, you're correct that one, it's hard to get a one-size-fits-all a lot of things. And so I like that this allowed for some of the members who in their communities, uh, they don't mind it. It made it a little easier. But to, to do nothing absent the grander plan, I think, would be a dereliction. Um, look, I voted against MIH. This body pushed it through. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but there was so much more that should have been in it. We know that to be correct because now we are making the changes that should have been done there. So we have a history of not doing everything at the same time for various reasons. And so uh, I'm proud to vote aye on this, and I think the body is doing something good. But the, some of the issues that were raised, I hope the body continues to take seriously so we can have a more comprehensive approach to the IBZs. Thank you. The final vote is six in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. The item is referred to the full land use committee. Okay, thank you all for coming out. Land use next. This hearing's closed.